Hi, I wanted to start talking to you today about abstract classes and interfaces. If you remember, before spring break, we were talking about inheritance. And inheritance allowed us to take advantage of a class that we'd already created and extend it, i.e. specialize it, so that we could use all the code that we'd written before and make it into something new that was similar. And remember, with inheritance, a subclass is an example of a superclass. Well, here we're going to take it a couple steps further and talk about abstract classes and interfaces. So let's see what that's going to look like. Syntactically, an abstract class is going to have an access specifier here at the beginning, and it will also have the keyword abstract. And the access specifier is just what you're used to. It's public or private. This keyword abstract here is at the middle. And then the rest of it is a name just like what we're used to, where we say class and then whatever the class name is. So the only thing special about abstract classes is that you put this keyword abstract here in the middle. Now, a, an abstract class can't be instantiated. So the idea here is it works just like a superclass or a parent class, but it doesn't have absolutely all the code in it. In particular, it's missing a method or two that, are, that would be abstract. And that abstract method is just going to be a method that has no body. It will have to be overridden in the subclass. And we'll define it by just saying again, just the same way we would a normal method, right? We have the public private access specifier, then we have this keyword abstract, and then we'll have a return type and a method name with the parameter list. So again, here, the main thing is the keyword abstract differentiating it, and then syntactically we have the semicolon at the end, which can be a little bit tricky because, as you know, they're hard to see. And so if you put one there when you don't want one, it causes a lot of problems. But here we do want it, and that's why it's not usually a syntax error when we put it there when we don't want it. So what we realize now, hopefully, is this idea of an abstract class is just a generic container for all the code that's going to be in common between all the subclasses. And then it's going to specify an interface for perhaps a method or maybe even two or more that isn't implemented in that upper class, but it's going to be different for each of the subclasses. But we're going to define that method in the abstract class so that the subclasses have to um, implement it. That also allows us then, if we declare a variable of the abstract type, we'll be able to actually run that abstract method, you know, or call that abstract method on a variable of that type, and it will run the specific method for the subclass. So that's a lot of talking, but let's look at an example now of a piece of code of abstract, with an abstract class. So looking at this, what we see is we define an allowed toy. Okay, an allowed toy is a class that's just not going to actually implement um, anything or be, ever be instantiated. I say it's not going to implement, but it does implement this interface. We see here a little sneak peek of the syntax for an interface. But in fact, the allow toy is going to be an abstract class, as you see in red. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to have a volume. Okay, and that's the main thing that it's implementing here. And in particular, we're, so every con the constructor will always just initialize the volume to a certain value um, as specified by the new call. And then we're going to have this abstract method that's not ap actually implemented yet, right? Because it has a semicolon at the end and the keyword abstract. But we have implemented two methods, get volume and set volume, so the getter and setter for this instance variable of volume. So now we wouldn't ever create a loud toy itself, but we can use this loud toy to define other classes that we will, in fact, instantiate. 
So here's an example. We can have a toy robot which extends loud toy. Again, another little sneak peek at a different at the interface syntax. Um, but then what we have here is a charge level. That's for the rechargeable interface. And now we have a toy robot where in the constructor we call the superclass with a volume of 10. We set the charge level for the rechargeable interface to 5. And now we implement actually the make noise method. So now we see the actual code for how a toy robot is going to implement the make noise method. And the toy robot is going to say beep beep. Then we can also see that it's going to implement the recharge and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But Let's look at an even simpler class that only extends loud toy. And here you can see we just call the superclass constructor with a volume of 3 and set, it, set that volume equal to 3. And now all we do is implement the make noise method and the toy sheep is actually going to say ba. So that makes sense. Right? Now we could see that if we were to call either make noise on a toy sheep, it would say ba, and if we were to call make noise on a toy robot, it would say beep beep. Okay, so there's two examples of, or three examples really, that enable you to see how an abstract class works. We have the loud toy abstract class, and then toy robot here, and toy sheep, which both extend loud toy and implement then the abstract method that was in loud toy. Well, let's now look at more detail of what an interface does. Well, an interface, it specifies a behavior for a class. So that's all it's doing. It's not actually implementing anything. It's just specifying the interface, hence the word, you know, being called an interface. So it looks very similar to a class. And the only difference is this keyword interface replaces the word class. So in the abstract class, abstract was added to the class name because it's a type of class. But here interface is just something that says, here's what, if you implement this interface, you have to have these particular methods. Okay, so let's look at an actual implementation then, right? So here are two interface examples, which we saw before, right? We saw that the audible interface, and if you look at it here, if I move it around a little bit for you, it's a little bit crazy, right? So if we, um, here's the interface audible. And notice that interfaces are always going to have an access specifier public. Otherwise, they wouldn't be very useful. Now. Audible is going is saying you have to, if you implement this interface, have these two methods get volume and set volume. Notice that here again the methods and you know, specifications end with semicolons. Here is the interface for rechargeable, and all it has to implement is recharge. Now an interface can have a constant or a variable in here that can be used, but notice that it's going to be public. So this really should be um, a constant that's only set for one time. Right, here's some ex and complete example, right? Here's our, here are our interfaces, and now we have a bigger example of a cell phone which implements both rechargeable and audible. And you can see how it implements them both, right? It, it has its own constructor. Notice it does not extend loud toy. So even though it implements the audible interface and has a get volume and set volume, the way that it makes its noise is through the make call method. And, it, and since it does not extend loud toy, it doesn't have to have a make noise method. But it does have to have a recharge method um, that's defined the same way as a rechargeable interface because it actually implements rechargeable. So this is just a very simple example and a set of classes. We can look at the picture here, right? So this is what it looks like in a UML. Notice we have the abstract class of loud toy that is in italics, and its abstract method is also in italics. You'll see that loud toy is extended by both toy sheep and toy robot. So a toy sheep is a loud toy, and toy robot is a loud toy, 
So both of them have to implement the make noise method and they can make use of all of the methods that are already defined in LoudToy. Now notice LoudToy also implements an audible um, interface and because of that it has to have a get volume and set volume and since they're implemented in LoudToy they're also available in ToySheep and ToyRobot so just by extension um, ToySheep and ToyRobot are implementing the audible interface as well. So now we can look at our interfaces and we have an audible interface. We see the example of using a, having a static constant up here for max volume. And then we have the rechargeable interface. Notice that how they're specified in UML is it says here Java interface, but it could also just say interface in some cases. Notice the difference is this dotted line and this dotted line is an implements um, relationship. So cell phone implements both the audible and the rechargeable interfaces and toy robot just implements the rechargeable interface. What I'd like to show you is or point out to you is that notice how with loud toy if you are extending an abstract class you have an is our relationship here with toy sheep and toy robot and all these toys are in fact related. But cell phone is not really related. It's a completely different class that stands on its own, yet it has some commonality because it implements similar interfaces, but it might have nothing else in common at all. So that's kind of the difference. If you want to use an abstract class, when you have several classes that are going to be related and actually making use of some common code, and you want to use an interface when you just want to define a behavior that's different, or no, not different, but a behavior that is the same between different classes that aren't related in other ways. All right, so let's just summarize here what we've put together today. First, abstract classes are not instantiated, and neither are interfaces for that matter. Okay, they just serve as a template to inherit. For, you know, with the common code for all the subclasses. Abstract methods don't have a body and they have to be overridden in a subclass. Interfaces, on the other hand, specify a behavior for a class, kind of like a contract saying, if I implement this interface, I'm going to do it in a certain way. And note that the keyword, keyword interface actually replaces class, so it's a completely different thing if not isn't a class. But the abstract keyword is in addition to the keyword class. So an abstract class is just another type of class, but an interface is something completely different. So subclasses of abstract classes use the keyword extends. So remember, this is the same kind of thing. Well, this is exactly the same thing that happens with inheritance. This is just we're in, um, using inheritance with an abstract class. And then classes that implement an interface use the keyword implements instead. And abstract classes are italicized, their name in UML, along with the name of the method that is abstract. And abstract classes use the inheritance symbol of an arrow with an unfilled head and a solid line. And interfaces have a special line above the class name that's interface, and they use a dotted line arrow. So I hope that you have enjoyed um, or not enjoyed, maybe per se, but learn something from this, and um, we'll see you next time.